Okay guys, let's see a show of hands. Who wants to make more power? Okay, everybody, right? Everybody wants to make more power. Who wants to do it as cheaply as possible? Come on, you in the pajamas, get that hand up. We all want to make more power and we all want to do it as inexpensively as possible. Guess what? Today is your lucky day. In this video, we've got a ton of low buck upgrades for a small block 350. Before we get to that, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'm not even waiting until the end of the video. Come on guys, help me out, do all that stuff. Okay, in this video, low buck performance mods. We've got two different cylinder heads, we've got a bunch of intakes, we've got a couple of camshafts, we've got a ton of stuff. So let's get going. To demonstrate what is possible for a low buck 350 build-up approach, what I did was we combined your just kind of basic short block with a couple of very inexpensive aftermarket upgrades, basically the heads, cam, and intake. Now, in this particular combination, I didn't run the baseline like the stock combination, but what I can tell you is if I go to the wrecking yard and pick up, let's say, a Vortec 350 and take the fuel injection off and put a dual plane intake and a carburetor and a distributor on it, it'll make somewhere between, we've had some make as low as 290, most of them are closer to 310 horsepower when we run them basically in that stock trim. But what I was trying to do is create something that would be um, a low buck deal. So what we did here, you're probably wondering about, hey, what the heck's going on with the top of the power curve? And we're going to get into that in just a second. But what I did was we took a basic short block. In this case, it started out as an L98, the original tune port short block, just because that's what Westec had laying around. You could go to the junkyard and get a Vortex short block. You could get basically any sort of 350 short block and just start with that, because what you're going to get other than the Vortex heads, which are fairly decent, but if you get a set of 882 heads or any of the previous ones, they're just not going to make a ton of power but all you want really is the short block. So what we did was we picked up, we had that stock L98 short block, and then we applied a set of ProComp, or now Speedmaster, their CNC ported 210 cc heads with 64 cc chambers, but they were CNC ported. We installed a mild comp cam, because if you want to make power, you're definitely going to have to spend a little bit of money at least for a camshaft, and that was a comp Extreme Energy 270 hydraulic roller, because this was a hydraulic roller block. That was a 218, 224 at 50, and I'll go ahead and put the rest of the specs up here, and you guys can take a look at that, but it's a fairly small cam. And then we put a single plane intake on here, because again, we were trying to get a low buck kind of approach, and this was, a, another, again, a pro comp single plane intake, and then a 750 carburetor on it. So kind of your standard deal. You could run an HEI distributor. You could even get that from the wrecking yard if you were getting your wrecking yard wrecking yard combination. But here's what happened, and, it, and it's interesting, and this is something that you definitely have to look out for when you're getting, um, especially low buck aftermarket heads, but you want to make sure that you have enough valve spring in it, and that was the problem here. Now, our combination produced you know, 380 horsepower, so it was kind of on the right track, and what we like, 392 foot-pounds of torque, nice flat torque curve up there. But you can see the power just crashed out here, and that's not a function of airflow or anything like that. That's just valve spring. We ran into valve float. So the first thing, obviously, we had to do was, when, and this is while we were on the dyno, and this is one of the things that you learn when you put <laughs> heads on that are assembled and already have valve springs on them, sometimes they're not, they're not efficient. Uh, not, there's not enough. So here's what happened when we cured the valve spring problem. We just put a set of um, springs from comp cams on it, and you can see now that we were able to rev the motor out, um, the motor made 385 horsepower. We didn't increase the peak power that much, but now it wasn't just crashing with, with insufficient valve spring. So even though we didn't start out with a baseline, we're going to learn a lot of stuff here going on. So we've got a lot of modifications we're making to this to improve the power output, because we had a set of ported heads. We had a decent cam, we had a decent intake, and we figured, you know what, this thing should really be making more power. So let's figure out now how to make more power. After curing our spring problem, we decided, you know, this thing really, I want this thing to make more power. So what would happen if originally we just chose a different camshaft rather than that 270 cam? So if we chose something that's a little bit more aggressive and something that's going to make a little more power going in, then we would have only spent money once. And that's why I do this testing for you guys, so you guys can figure out what you want to do which direction you'd want to go before you make that decision. So here's what happened when we installed a different camshaft. This was another comp cam. 
and this was an extreme energy 282 and it was a 232 36 degree duration split so it stepped up quite a bit um, from our previous cam from our 270 and as you can see it really helped out with power and i'll go ahead and put the rest of the specs up here on the comp cam so you guys can take a look at it you know it's good stuff but you can see it picked up power from about 3900 rpm and then carried it out nicely this thing now is revving out past 6000 rpm made peak power right at 6,000, you know, traded a little bit down here. And again, that's why I do these tests. You guys can decide, hey, I don't want to lose any down low. I'm only interested in the top, whatever you guys need. But this is what happened when we installed more camshaft. And now our, our low buck for our 350 inch small block was making fairly decent power. It was making over 400 horsepower. So that's a good amount, but we weren't done there. So what I did was I'm going to show you what happened when we tried a different intake manifold, we still had the single plane intake manifold on there, which isn't always the best choice for a street driven combination. So what I did is we installed a dual plane intake from Procomp. Now this dual plane did kind of what it's supposed to. It made more power down low down here in the 3,500 to 4,000 range but it didn't make you know it lost power up top which is again something we expect from a single plane dual plane combination and it did make less power up at the top but again i don't think this is really a good trade-off i don't think even that extra power and that just little range right there is enough to offset the loss down low i just don't think this is the combination that i would do so we tried one more intake manifold and it goes to show you that there definitely is a difference between even the same style manifold from different manufacturers. So we installed another single plane intake, and this one was from Professional Products, which is a fairly, another fairly low buck deal. But you can see we got good gains there. So it was more of a high rise design, you know, longer runners, just basically a better design single plane. And that pushed our power up to 431 horsepower. So that was a good combination. You know, that single plane intake, and we're using the same 750 Holly carburetor, which worked well. Our peak torque was up to 414 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing was working fairly well. I made one more intake manifold change after this, and I'll go ahead and show you that. I'll get rid of the cam just so it doesn't get too busy here. This is our single plane intake with the bigger cam. Here's what happened when I kind of went and bought a name brand. I got a Edelbrock RPM Air Gap, which is always a good intake manifold on a small block Chevy. So here's what has happened when we, when we installed the air gap. Now this is more of what we expect from a single plane, dual plane kind of combination. So the dual plane, the air gap, made more power from 3,000 and it would have made more power down below that. But from 3,000 out to 40, you know, 4,900 almost, and then made a little bit less power down low. So again, this is the trade-off that you guys need to decide. Hey, do I am I willing to have that sacrifice? Do I just only care about the the big end stuff? You know, from 4,900 to 6,500. You guys get to decide if this trade-off is worthwhile. For me, I, if, if this is a street car, I almost always pick the RPM air gap. If you want a little bit more, put a half-inch spacer on it. You can usually pick up a little bit of power at the top. And uh, if I'm the only time really I'm thinking about going to a single plane is if I have a lot of camshaft or a lot of displacement or a lot of RPM. That's that's kind of where those things shine. So now let's take a look and see what happened after we installed a different set of cylinder heads. After running through all the different intake configurations on our uh, modified low buck 350, we decided to figure out, well, what happens if a guy just put the standard heads, the ASCAS, like the 190cc ASCAS Pro Comp heads, instead of the 210, like full CNC ported ones? They're a little bit, they're obviously less expensive than the ported ones. And can they support this power level? Like where, where would the power be? Can they still make this power and not have to pay for the price of the ported heads? Well, that's a good question. So we ran that test. Here is our combination with the ported heads and the cam and the professional products intake you know they, they all had same headers they all had the same 750 holly and stuff but here's what happened when we replaced the 210 cc cnc ported heads with the 190 cc as cast heads let's take a look at that so as expected the smaller heads the as cast heads they flow less the chamber sizes were the same on the two, and they, but they didn't make the same power. <laughs> Not surprisingly, I mean, the added flow from the CNC heads definitely made more power. The power output dropped down to 407 horsepower. 
Um, peak torque wasn't down a lot to 410 foot-pounds. As you can see, the smaller heads actually made a, a touch more power down low. Not a lot. Those are kind of essentially the same. If you look at the difference there, it's about uh, 399 versus 405. You're talking about six foot-pounds at the, at the most. Um, that's not a ton. The added flow took off from about 4,700, you know, all the way out. And had we had more engine, basically, if this was a 383 or had more compression or had more camshaft, we probably would see even greater gains from the CNC ported heads. But here's all the data, and you guys get to choose. Would you pick the low buck route and, and, and the ultra low buck route and pick the... Uh, standard as cast heads or would just step up a little bit for the cnc ported head so then if you went up later on and wanted to make even more power at least you'd have enough head flow because in my opinion it's always better to have even if you want to run a mild cam have more head flow and that's exactly what the ls combinations do if you look at an ls3 a stock ls3 it has a <laughs> you know it has a 430 horsepower cam with 600 horsepower cylinder heads. So it's a good combination. I always like more cylinder head and that's what we had here. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what'd you think about our low buck buildup on our small block 350? Now, which way would you go? Would you pick that really inexpensive as cast performance heads or the slightly more expensive CNC heads? You know, just in case you want to upgrade later on, you have a little something extra. Now, what about the camshaft? Would you pick the small cam for all that low speed drivability and power or the top end rush of the bigger cam? What about intake manifolds? Bottom end, dual plane, drivability, good power, or the top end rush of the single plane? Now, here's the important part. It doesn't matter which one you choose because that's not as important. There's no wrong answer. The important thing is we get to choose. That's what makes America so great. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Lots more coming up. I'll keep testing.